earthquakes in the mid-continental rift area of the Great Lakes, magnitude 3.6 to magnitude 3.6 in two weeks in the area of the mantle plume of the mid-continental ridge that has been there for over a million years. The sleeping giant of Ontario, just north of Lake Huron, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and it's full of magma. This is an area of superior, as we see there, and that U-shaped area is full of magma, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Now, most people on the East Coast don't realize that there is magma under there. Look at that black line underneath the uh, Smoky Mountains, the Appalachians, the Adirondacks, that is magma under there, and that uh, beige-looking uh, horseshoe shape is the mid-continental ridge right there where the Great Lakes are sitting. This is an old uh, draft of what I made on Google Earth having to do with earthquakes of the East Coast, and this is the mantle plume head it goes all the way down through Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, and uh, goes all the way into west into New Mexico. This is the magma right there. Now, a lot of these people hearing noises and cracks under their feet, for example, in Kansas, the booming sounds that they hear are actually over 12 to 15 volcanoes in Kansas that are the explosive kimberlite volcanoes, they spout out diamonds and precious gems, and they're very explosive. Kimberlite, kimber, kimberlite volcanoes are explosive. This is an area of the East Coast that is basically sloughing off uh, into the uh, southeast of the Atlantic. The New Madrid seismic area is, should we actually be called the New Madrid Rift Zone because there's magma under it, and there's a rift zone there, uh, just like the area of the Lake Superior and the Superior, which was once much closer, here it is, much closer to what we see there on the left, Wyoming. Superior was much closer to Wyoming, and the United States and North America are basically stretching out. That's where we're getting all these very strange earthquakes. Let's go take a look at the map now. Here we are at Southern Berkeley. And this is uh, today's earthquake, a very shallow earthquake, about a mile or two down, magnitude 3.6 in Ontario of Canada, north of Ottawa, north of Lake Huron. But uh, we also had one, as we can see here on the Canadian earthquake map, uh, about uh, two weeks ago. Okay? And that, again, was 3.6, a depth of two kilometers. Basically, again, north of Lake Huron, and you can see here the am amount of earthquakes around that area. And along the St. Lawrence Seaway, this is Mississippi right here. Mississippi, all, all, river, all rivers are fault lines. So Mississippi goes all the way up to here. And then we have the lakes, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and then we have the St. Lawrence Seaway right here. Basically, this area has very small amount of area to cut off before it sort of sloughs off to have a... Uh, what should we say, a cutting off of that area, just like we have in, uh, here it is, okay. Here we are, this is the area right here, just like we have a, uh, the rift in this area here, the great rift valley of the eastern part of Africa. You can see how this is, it's sloughing off, this, this area here will cut off sometime in the long distant future, just like Madagascar has cut off Africa, so will this. That's going to be bad news because this is where the Nile River starts from. It goes all the way, as you can see here, up to through uh, uh, Sudan and Egypt, all the way down to the, to, through Cairo, okay, into the uh, Delta, the Nile Delta. And that's where it comes from, these high mountains of all this area. 
Now, this is this is what we have in North America. It's stretching. This uh, New Madrid seismic zone has magma under it, and it's uh, sloughing off. It's a failed rift valley, and this is what we're talking about. This area here has the mantle plume underneath. That's magma underneath. It's over a million point one years old. And they don't know, the geologists don't know where it's coming from. And I'll leave a link below for you for the video on that. Um, it has to do with the mantle plume here, right here. And there's an embedded video at the bottom. You should see because it does talk about the fact that there's magma under there. Um, let's go back to the top. This is uh, Lake's, the Mid-Continental Rift, the Queenan Fault and uh, the beautiful Lake Superior. They have found the same rocks on both sides of the lake. At one time it was the same. Now, some of the, it's uh, breaking up. Now, this is again, beautiful pictures of mid-continental rifts. 1.1 billion year, I said million, I'm sorry, it's billion year old volcanic rocks. It's not a million, it's billion. Um, the formation of the plate boundary, this is it right here. It's one of the oldest magma plumes right there the Laurentia plume right there okay billions ga not ma okay i'm sorry that's my mistake please forgive me um it's a hybrid rift large igneous province a region of extensive volcanism associated with upwelling and melting of deep mantle materials and this is what it looks like the rift valley lake superior right here very geological uh, explanation of it and the timeline okay there we go and as it gets much later compression reverse faulting and uplift additional crustal thickening surprises from my uh, seismic imaging what's under there did a hot spot supply the excess magma the mid-continental rift extraordinary feature that arose from the unusual combination of the continental rift and LIP, illustration over a billion years of Earth's history, even unlikely events can happen. Rifting can be classified into two types. Passive rifting, in which forces pull the lithosphere in opposite directions, extending it, and active, that is, rifting where the mantle or hot or plume or hot spot thermally upslifts and stretches a crust above it. For the mid-continental rift, we suspect that the rifting continent, by chance, eroded, overrode a plume or a region of anomalous hot upper mantle, so both active and passive rifting may have been at play. This is what we're talking about. Now, the mid-continental rift failure, it was previously thought to have failed, stopped extending because of regional compression associated with Greenville erogeny. But uh, new age dating shows that most of the compression recorded by reverse faulting occurred long after extension and volcanism ended. So the mid-continental rift failure was not due to Greenville compression. Instead, it stopped spreading much earlier once the seafloor spreading between Amazonia and Laurentia was fully established. So I'll leave a link so you can see the beautiful uh, video here. It's very interesting to see. Lake Superior, mid-continental rift, a billion year story. And this is what we're talking about. Now, um, this is, as you can see, okay, this mantle plume, as we said, the, that horse-shaped thing goes like this, mid a New Madrid seismic zone or rift, failed rift valley, and this here. Goes all the way down here through Nebraska, Kansas, um, uh, Oklahoma, Texas, and then goes through New Mexico this way to the west. Okay, that's that mantle plume from a billion years ago. Now, the Baja California mantle plume goes like a Y. It goes into a, a, a western area here under San Andreas Fault and the Walker Lane Fault, where we have the high threat volcanoes of California. And the, the eastern part goes this way through Utah into uh, Wyoming, uh, Yellowstone, and then makes a westward uh, a direction, a turn into Idaho. That looks like an imaginary seven. And they say that that's probably because of the phaleron, the ancient phaleron plate that uh, was stuck underneath and pushes that, man, that magma that way. Now, okay, so this is what's happening there. 
Oh, that just turned yellow, okay. Um, so, and this is the Canadian map showing it. This is the one that was two weeks ago, 3.6, on the 14th of October, and this one is today. It's surprising that USGS has it up there because usually they don't report Canadian quakes. So that's in Ontario right there. And um, uh, as, we, as we know, even in the northern part of Canada, they have kimberlite volcanoes, even in, uh, here in the, in the uh, peninsula area right here, Yukon Territories and the Arctic Circle. This is, this is uh, where's Baffin Island? Baffin Island, yes. Um, a couple of months back, I remember I made a video on, on the kimberlite volcanoes on Baffin Island. So there's um, diamond volcanoes up there as well, just like there is in Kansas. There's about uh, 12 to 15 volcanoes here. Very old, but they're, if you're living there and you feel booming sound, you hear booming sounds and your house shaking, it could be the gas emissions from the volcanoes of those, um, the gas emissions from those volcanoes underneath you. So, okay, all of you there, please be very careful and thank you for your support.